no notes today, guys. No notes. I just watched and yeah, we're gonna get into it. Hey guys, it's your girl Tara Crush back with another review, and this time it is for Sisters on BET. If you haven't already, please hit my subscribe button down at the bottom. Thank you so very much. And again, like I said, I didn't take any notes, so we're gonna get right into it. So we open up the episode with the scene of Joey coming to see Fatima about their child. Now, Joey is Fatima's baby daddy. Like, what? What? A whole baby daddy, like a whole baby daddy. Like, he talking about this child, nine years old. She just up and left. Are you serious right now? Like, hold on, hold on, Tyler. Like, what is your purpose in throwing this monkey wrench in the whole game plan? Is it because the relationship was looking too one-sided as far as her having to deal with his baggage? Now you just want to pop out a baby out of nowhere on a female? Like, really, though? Am I tripping? Like, am I tripping? Like, I don't... <sighs> It's going to take me a while to digest this one because I really don't understand where he's going with this. Like, why would you have this person be a deadbeat mother? Someone who walked out on their child and it looks like from the previews because she didn't like him. What? What? Oh, I, she's going to explain that one. I know she better been talking about something else. She better been talking about the daddy and not the child because Fatima, I'm a Girl, I will windmill you. Girl, stop. Get off my hair. Get off my hair. Yeah. Make me windmill you. The babies ain't got nothing to do with our with our actions. And if you said later and head, girl, you got some explaining to do. Okay, so baby daddy leaves. He said he feel like he he said too much already. Which you really did, but you said enough for me to know it wasn't an aborted baby. Because I just knew you were talking about I'm baby daddy because um, she was pregnant with my baby and then she got rid of it. No, you're talking about a whole child that is nine years old now. I'm like, I am tripping, uh, tripping, okay? So, moving right along, we do see Sabrina at the, at the, um, at the prison and she's with Calvin. Calvin's all hugged up on or whatever, asking questions. Of course, being his normal insecure self, he wants to know about bail and what's taking Marvy so long for coming out. Do we think his check cleared? Did his money go through? Yeah, it did. What's he doing with that kind of money? Was he some type of scammer? No, he's not. He's a prince. He ain't no prince. Yeah, he is. No, he ain't. Yeah, he is. No, he ain't. Yes, he is. So, <laughs> Calvin and his feelings because he said, oh, so I guess you got some, uh, Coming to America thing going. Yes, she does. Basically. She about to be the queen of Zamunda. What's it to you? <laughs> so he was very, you know, once she told him that she did like Bayo and Bayo liked her, he put his arm back. What's that mean for us? It means nothing. It means that you still, Calvin, Mr. I love a dildo just as much as you do. Equal opportunity dildo users over here, Calvin. And then you have this African man, this African prince that is very attractive, very rich, and very into her. Hmm. Hmm. So it's going to be something. And we know that, that he is a prince because remember, there were ladies from his country that saw Sabrina and, you know, pretty much attributed her to being royalty. So there's that. So Calvin's in his feelings or whatever, but he should be because you know what? You're pretty much losing out. And I'm going to tell you, Every time Tyler introduces another person onto this show, another man, it's always refreshing. When Bayo first came into Sabrina's life, I was so happy because I'm like, finally, we get somebody that could possibly change up the dynamic with this girl. And there here come Calvin. When we got Robin introduced to the show for Andy, and even Paris, I was so excited because finally we get somebody that can change the dynamic, but then here come Gary. You know what I'm saying? It seems like one after the other, after the other, after the other. And it's like, geez, we can't never get anybody good in on the show because something always happens and the old person keeps coming back. So hopefully we get some newer characters next next year. But anyway, moving along. 
Maurice gets out and he is very excited. He's super over dramatic. And of course he is very negative towards Sabrina and Calvin. And when they get home, they realize that Q has robbed them blind. He took everything in the apartment from the couch to the TV. He ain't leave nothing but the ugly paintings on the wall. Okay. So Maurice gets mad and he cusses Calvin now and says he's a man. What did he do a twirl? Why did he let him in his house? Why did he let him do this? Why did he let him do that? You're supposed to be a man and blah, blah, blah. And Sabrina just break, basically had to tell uh, Maurice that he needed to chill and be humble and take some accountability because she told him to leave Q alone. She kept telling him to stop hanging out with him. And he kept hollering about he knew what he was doing. But no, you want to keep blaming everybody else for the conundrum that you guys are in, but it's all your fault, Maurice. And so when she told him that Calvin did beat um, Q with the golf club, he tried, He did? He did that for me? Mm. Yeah, but it ain't stop him from robbing you blind. So he ain't beat him enough. You know what I'm saying? So we just have to see, you know, how he goes about getting his stuff back because Sabrina did let him know that, that Q has his car. So, I don't know. I would have just called the police and said, listen, this guy, he stole everything out of my apartment. And he's got my car. I need to report my car stolen and I need to get my stuff back. That's what he should have done. Like, and I don't know why he didn't do that. Because you just got out of jail and you need to build your case against this, this idiot. That got you in, in trouble in the first place. Now you and, and your friend and lost y'all's job because of this fool. Because of you. And this fool. So, moving along from there, we did see Danny at the airport with Q and Preston. Preston came over to speak to her. And, of course, she was giving him the, you know, what are you doing here? What do you want? Type of attitude. Like, why are you always at my gate? Like, anytime you got to fly in, fly out. Well, he was like, I'm not flying out. He said, I'm actually here to pick up Mindy. So Mindy is coming to see Preston and you know, Danny felt the way or whatever. And she, uh, he asked her, did she want to meet her? Why would she want to meet Mindy? That is some true WPS. Okay. Cause I'm telling you, we don't do that. Like, uh, why would I want to meet your new girl? Like we no, we're not about to continue to be friends. Like I need to have no connection with this chick. Like, what are you talking about? So Danny did right telling him to keep it moving, you know, because like, who does that? Weird, right? Okay, and so, um, you know, Q comes over to see if she needed any help and she pretty much let him know, if you don't get the F away from me and told him in, in, in those words, get away from me. Like, you, there's nothing you can say to me. And he's just acting like I had to do it right now, bro. What you need to do, Danny, is set him up. You need to go and get that testimony for your girl and her her friend so that they can get off the hook and put him back on the hook where he belongs. Because it's it's stupid and foolish to even... I, it's just dumb. It's dumb and foolish. I don't get it. But we'll just have to see. So, so she did tell Preston that she did not want to meet his ex-girlfriend, Mindy. So he went on about his business and we didn't actually see that transpire. But Tim had already agreed to do lunch with Zach, but and he called to let her know that he was coming up there, but you know what he got on his mind, her illegitimate child. So he's headed up to the job. She has no idea what's going on. She's still reeling from thinking that she got something accomplished now. You got Gary there at the office waiting to have his meeting with um, Robin later. Um, and you also have Hayden there with... Tamira, but Tamira's filling out the application and Heather comes to have a meeting with Hayden and, you know, he's reassuring her that she can get half of his money and that she needs just as much as what he has and that he was going to help her and told her to go ahead and set up the meeting between her and Zach and he would show up at the meeting. She left to do that. Tamira came into office and basically told him that she did not feel comfortable with them working together. That, and I mean, told him, look at yourself. You will see why I'm jealous. <laughs> he looks at himself every day and he still want to know why you jealous. <laughs> he still want to know why you jealous. Okay, because he don't see it. I don't see it. They don't see it. Only you see it. You don't even see it. You just see the dollar signs. But, you know, 
It worked. Because when Heather came back in the office, he let her know that he was not going to represent her anymore. She got mad, called him corny. So River said, ugh, yeah, corny. Everybody knows it but you. Everybody knows it but you. Everyone. But anyway. So she leaves. Heather leaves and goes to talk to Fatima. Fatima convinces her to come to the house and that her and, you know, her and Zach will talk to her about what options they have or whatever because she said that he does have a lot of money to keep it tied up in court for a long time which means it would be a long time before you get any money so hopefully you know she can get zach to well zach can get her to go ahead and, and agree with an amount since they're not going to look at the paperwork and make sure that that's this child like it's crazy everything is crazy like the storyline is all over the place the timelines never match up i'm just so over it Okay, and so so then we go to the salon. Karen's there waiting on Aaron because they're about to have lunch. And Aaron comes and he and Karen go to the back to have lunch. They're eating, they're smile talking, blah, blah, blah. She's thanking him for being such a good guy. And then here comes Pam talking about you. Uh, somebody's here to see you. And she's like, here I come. She said, not you, him. And um, he's like, me? And she was like, yeah. Jennifer, I think is what she said her name was, is here to see you. And so he goes outside and they have this big heated argument. Pam's trying to get Karen to go outside to see what's going on. Karen's like, I'm not going out there. They ain't got nothing to do with me. Quit meddling, Pam. Pam's like, uh uh, ooh, she just slapped him. <laughs> so Karen looks, she's like, oh, I guess I gotta go out here. So basically, what we heard. They was arguing and the girl kept saying, you know what you did, you know what you did. And he said, quit calling me John. Is your real name John, Aaron? Oh, don't tell me you chose the name Aaron because it rhymes with Karen. Like, is your name John, bro? Why was she calling you John, bro? Please tell me. I would love to know. So she's beating him up, basically telling him that he won her life. And that he needs to come clean. And then Karen does eventually go out there. And she lets her know, you know, he plays you, makes you feel like you're the only one. So maybe you're some type of womanizer. But why is he going so hard for Karen? And Karen is giving, maybe she was the challenge that he needed. Maybe the other ladies just fell in his feet and just allowed him. And he needed something that was a little more challenging. But why did he change his name? What did he really do to this chick? Because she's like, you know what you did. You know what you did. Does she? I'm not certain. But we're going to, uh, well, I'm sure he knows. But but will you tell us? Because he's acting really oblivious if, uh, at this point. So that was strange. Then we do see Zach make it to the office to meet with Fatima. And he's asking her, is there something that you need to tell me? Did you tell me everything about you? And she's like, yeah, I told you everything, Zach. He's like, everything. She's like, yeah, everything. What, what's wrong with you? What are you talking about? He's like, why are you even telling me about Joy and your kid? And she was like, like, bro, did you not? Why wouldn't you tell him about the child? Like, what would be your motivation to keep a child a secret? Because to my knowledge, I thought that you wanted to have kids with Zach. But if you just don't like kids, period then maybe he does need to rethink his relationship with you because he's got cheering on the ways. He got cheering, so maybe he needs to rethink his relationship with you. I don't know. All I know is I don't like it. I don't like it one bit, and I need you to pull yourself together, uh, Fatima, and, and really get it together because this ain't, this ain't cute. And Tyler, I don't like what you're doing with this storyline. I don't like it. And hopefully it gets addressed in the team up because that starts next week too. So this is the eve of the season finale. The season finale is next week. And what we see, it looks like Aaron, maybe Robin didn't come up with the money. We don't know, but Gary doesn't trust it. Um, we also see, you know, the girl Jennifer or whatever John slash Aaron's boo thing's name is after explaining things to Karen about how he is and how he acts. We also see Karen telling Zach that she's not signing the, the child support paperwork. Excuse me, you already signed it. You already signed it. Oh, I'm sorry, you ain't got no control over the storyline. We supposed to act like we didn't see it and we don't know what that was and, and that that never happened, right? Oh, okay, that's right. 
And yeah, I don't I don't get it. I don't get it why Andy didn't just give them to Fatima. Cause she Karen had already signed them. So it, it, that's crazy. She acting like she ain't gonna sign them now. Like, girl, you already said, girl, I don't like it. And then we're going to see what happens with Danny and Sabrina as well, because we do see Q pulling out a gun on Maurice when Maurice comes to get his car. So it looks like it's going to be quite a season finale, but I don't know exactly what's going to happen. Maybe Maurice will get the gun from Q and kill him and then have to go to jail for real. And we won't have to deal with Maurice's character or Q's character anymore. Wouldn't that be great? Like I said, send Q with the Rocket Dushi. He, he'd be fine there. They'll love him. They'll love him. So I'm going to leave it right there because that was about all that needs to be covered with this episode. Again, it was kind of lackluster for a eve of a season finale, but I'll take it. I'll take it. Okay, so again, if you haven't already, please hit my subscribe button down at the bottom. Thank you so very much. And if you are not the subscribing type, that's cool. You made it to the end of this video, and that's more than I can ask of anybody, so thank you. <laughs> and that is my $5.02. Peace.